What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Zabbix on an Ubuntu 2404 um, OS version, whether it be a virtual machine or you know, hard piece of hardware that you have that OS installed on. We're going to get Zabbix up and running on it today. And I'm not going to do anything fancy. This is basically if you go to their website and I'll put a link in my description. This is the instructions that they give you on how to set it up. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So once you're logged into your server, um, your, your user does need to have uh, sudo privileges. So if it doesn't, you need to make sure that it is in the sudoers group. You can do this by doing, I think, group and then username. Oh, is it, uh... is it groups? There we go. Um, so yeah, you can you can check to see if your user is a part of the sudo group. Um, if you just type groups and then your username, so mine is. So that is the first part of the puzzle there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just do sudo s to hop into root. And then on their website, there's a couple of basically copy paste things that you'll use based on what version you want to install. In this video, I'm going to install 7.4. I like a lot of things that they're doing with the dashboard uh, to where I think that Grafana is not even necessary anymore, uh, at least for, for a lot of the things I use it, which is great. I don't have to worry about two separate um, products. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to paste the first one here. All this is doing is is basically getting the Zabbix repo and setting it up in your uh, your repo list. So we got those things. So once we get that set up, we're just going to hit clear, and then we're going to do an apt update to update our stuff. And you can see here, Zabbix is part of that uh, repository list now. We could we have we have the Zabbix repos right here. So. That's looking good so far. And then the next command from their website basically just installs all the different packages that are necessary to run the Zabbix front end, with the exception of one, which we'll get to next. So you're going to go ahead and, of course, miss the A. So you're going to copy paste that next one. And this is going to take a minute. This is going to install everything that we need minus one to get you up and running. I don't know why they don't add MySQL server as part of that as part of that uh, that setup, but they, but they just don't. All right, so it tells you as part of your the next step to just kind of start working on your MySQL server. However, you could see I'll go ahead and I'll enter in the next command in the list that it tells you to do. And it errors out basically saying my SQL service isn't running from what I can remember this error is. Um, so it's not a part of the list, but if you read what they wrote, uh, it says, make sure you have the database server up and running. So, in order to do that, you have to do sudo, or no, now we're already root, so apt install mysql-server tech y. Uh, I guess it assumes that that's already built into your OS or that you already have that up and running. However, on a brand new Ubuntu install, it's typically not, so. Okay, now that that's done, set clear. And then now we can move on with the next few steps in their list here. So we're gonna do MySQL, e root, p, ask us for our password. This is the password that's gonna be set for the SQL server. So make sure you notate this and write this down somewhere. All right, so now we're logged into MySQL and we're just gonna kind of go one by one and paste these commands in here as well. Um, again, you could try to do them all at once, but I like to do them one at a time. And this 
next one that we're going to cop, copy and paste in, we do need to alter what our password is going to be for this. So create user Zavix at local host. We're creating that MySQL. I believe it's the, the, the user account that we're going to use to access the MySQL database. So we're just going to go ahead and put in a password here. Actually, for the sake of this, I'm just going to make this super easy. Um, we're just going to do password. This is just in a lab environment anyway. Password one, two, three, exclamation. Enter. This next command is going to be granting all privileges to that user. And I don't really know what this one does. Uh, so it just says it's part and necessary for the setup. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to type quit. All right. All right. So then in the next liner that they want to have us paste in here, it says that we're going to need to um, to import the initial schema and data. We need to go ahead and paste this in here. And looks like this might be us do that. We need our password one, two, three, maybe. Oh, is that right? no. Ew, I need to do uh. Created password. Oh, maybe do I need to do All right, so you need to do keep this as username Zabbix, tag P Zabbix, and then when it says enter password, I put the uh, I put this here, the one that we used during the MySQL setup. So after that's done, we need to disable the log bin trust function creators option after importing the database scheme. So what we're going to do is we're going to do my, so we're going to basically get back into MySQL. And we're going to set global log bin trust function creators equal zero bam and then we're going to do quit okay and the next thing we need to do is configure the database for the zabbix server so for that we're going to go to c we're going to go to do etsy zabbix and then we're going to do list and then we need to nano zabbix server.conf and then we need to find db password okay so we'll uncomment that out and we'll do our password three exclamation Okay, so let's save that. System CTL restart Zabbix server Zabbix agent Apache 2. And then we want to enable those so that they all start automatically on reboot.
Okay. Looking good. Um, so now we should just be able to go into a web browser and access the front end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my browser. All right. So the first time that you go to the Zavix front end, you just need to make sure that you're doing it over HTTP. It, I don't I think the HTTPS setting has to be enabled. We can maybe touch on that in a later video, but you use HTTP and then you put the IP address or your FQDN slash Zabbix and it'll bring you to this screen right here. So we're just going to go ahead and start setting this guy up. Next step, the prerequisite list. Everything looks good. Next step, database type, MySQL. Uh, All this stuff is already is already done here. The next step, Zavix server name. Let's call this uh, packet sniffer. Default time zone. I'm in Central. I can't stand finding this America. Chicago, I got lucky. All right, cool. Uh, let's go uh, dark mode. And we want to inc uh, not ready to do all that at the moment. We'll do that later. Next step. All right, after you finish that, if everything goes according to plan, you should be given the login screen here. So at this point, I need to remember what the default password is for Zavik. So give me a second here. All right. Looks like the default username is admin and the password is Zavix. And we're in. Awesome. Uh, so we're up and running. We're cooking now with everything let's take a look at just to make sure everything's good with our database let's see how our uh our zabbix server agent is working here let's see all right yeah we're looking good we're looking like we're storing data and everything's working the way that it's supposed to with the uh zabbix server agent awesome So yeah, guys, uh, we're up and running in Zabbix. I'm going to do, do kind of these in like a series. The next one, I think we'll go ahead and maybe, um, I think maybe in the next one, we'll try to, um, we'll be, we'll probably connect it to a 40 gate device or, or a networking device and just kind of see how setting up a device in Zabbix will go for monitoring and maybe creating like a dashboard or something for it. So, um, Zabbix is up and running. We're installed. That took about 10 minutes. Uh, super easy. There is a bit of a learning curve with the configuration, but in, you know, as we work through the videos, we'll kind of go over those things. So, um, if you guys have any issues with your server, Go ahead and drop a comment down below. Hopefully I can get, get around to helping you um, if you do run into any issues. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.